Praise the Lord, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. This is Minister Paul. It's 11, 11 a.m. out here uh, in Northern California on May 30th, 2014. Praise the Lord. So this morning I'm studying John 18 and again, praise God, again, praise God, again, praise God, praise his holy name. The Lord Jesus has given me a deep revelation in his word. You know, I've been reading this and reading this, read the whole thing, reading this and reading this, but it wasn't till actually I began to seek the Lord and say, what exactly am I, am I to see in this, Lord Jesus? And he said, you seek the truth as a witness of the truth. As a witness of the truth. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm just going to read uh, 11 scriptures. And I'm going to pray on this all day. And I'm going to pray on this all night. And I'm going to thank the Lord Jesus that he has uh, anointed me as a mouthpiece to proclaim his power. And proclaim his return and proclaim his glory, his love and his salvation plan unto the whole world. And as to any who will receive and believe in him as the Lord and Savior and his resurrection and redeeming power. Now let's go to the word and, and share this revelation as I always do. I'm compelled today to tell you, you receive divine revelations from the Lord. Share them with his bride. Share them with your brothers. Share them with your sisters. Encourage them. Equip them. Edify them. And make full proof of your ministry today. In the Gospel of John chapter 18, it records that it says in verse 1, And when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook of Cedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Now, a lot of people would just continue reading, but not me. And you should not either. I want to know, what well, he spoke in these words. What words? What words did Jesus speak before he went into the garden? You have to go back. This is how I read the Bible. Let's see, what did he say? He said in 1724, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. We're gonna have some we're gonna have some major encouragement from this word today. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. The world hath not known me, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. They know, they know that they know that they know that you sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. The love, the agape, unconditional, forgiving love of the Father came to you through Jesus Christ and now dwells in you. So when we go to 18, when he said these words, we have a much more significant foundation on which to read this word that his love dwells in us since the foundation of the world god had an agape love plan to save you today and your loved ones and as far off as many who would believe and call upon his name <sighs> thank you jesus verse 2 and judas also which betrayed him you know, and there's going to be some people that come against you. They come against the anointing. They come against your ministry. They come against everything you want to do for the Lord. And, and I received it through a, a witness today. Prophet Adrian in Atlanta sent me a text that says, your confrontation is your confirmation. Let that sink in. Don't, don't worry and whine and be upset at all about the confrontations you face daily in your life, even with your family and brothers and sisters, when, uh, when bringing forth the truth as a witness of the truth. The confrontation you face is your confirmation. Where is that in the word? Jesus said, they'll hate you because they hated me first. In this world, you'll always find tribulations. 
but I've overcome the world. Do you understand? So let's go forward because I'm about ready to shout out of here. Three, Judas, then having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, come thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Well, if they had lanterns and torches, that means it was at night. Try to uh, bum rush him. They try. To, sorry, you know, go. <laughs> they try. <laughs> bum rush him. The term I used as a youth. I haven't said that in a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Anybody need some joy? <laughs> they tried to bum rush him. Well, they did, didn't they? They tried to, uh, you know, sneak up on him at night in a in a in a scandalous fashion. I, I don't know how else to put it. G Four. Jesus, therefore, now look, he knowing all things, so how are you going to sneak up on somebody that knows you're there? This is some deep revelation in this. He knows they're coming. Matter of fact, it's for this reason he came down here. Glory to his name. That they should come upon him. He went forth. Notice, he, notice, he said, you don't have to come find me. Here I am. I step forward. Here I am. What seek ye? Are you ready for some divine revelation of the power of God dwelling within you right now in his agape love and forgiveness? He steps forward from the place where he used to go to be quiet, and they're going to try to come bus bum, bum, bum rush him. Help me, Lord Jesus. And he steps forward. Now watch this. He said, whom seek ye? Don't you know he already knew? <laughs> He framed this before the beginning of time. He knew this very moment would come, but he wants to put it forth to them to get it in writing that they are about to uh, begin something that will never end. The salvation of your souls through the blood of Jesus Christ that was spilt to pay your sin debt. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus says unto him, unto them, the ones that are trying to sneak up on him but couldn't, I am he. There's such a mighty revelation in these powerful three words that says, I am he. Do you understand that Jesus of Nazareth means anointed Messiah, the, the powerful anointing of God himself on our Savior? Whom seek ye? And he told them, and they missed it. And he's about ready to display a, the power of God through his words. Three simple words. I am he was his response to their three, their three words of doubt. Whom seek ye? And it brought them to their knees. The gospel records. As soon as he said, then as he say, had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. They, they fell under the power of God through three words, whom seek ye? And they, and, they, and they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. Verse 7. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? Again, three words, like it is finished. Three powerful words that will be with us eternally. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I've told you that I am he. And herein is the revelation the Lord Jesus gave to me today through his Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. He's, he's telling them, and it's being recorded forever, and he knew that it would, and he knew I'd read this today and proclaim it to the world, that he displayed to them not only who he is in words, but in power as a witness to the truth. In power, his words brought them to their knees, and they still continued on. To crucify him. As it is written. Because God cannot lie. For you. He went to the cross. Even though he had enough power. To blow them to their knees. With three words. He went to the cross. Beaten. Stabbed. Pierced. And died and rose again. For us. We sit down here wondering. Where are you Jesus? Jesus. Come on, somebody. 
Come on, somebody. Am I talking to myself? Where are you in my life, Jesus? Really? He's right where he said he'd be always, forever. And now, now these people, now I just want to go deeper into this revelation and close, make a, a short video in verse 10. Simon Peter draws a sword, and we all know this, two swords, one sword, carry a sword. Those who live by the sword die by the sword, and the debates continue on, on YouTube for decades. But the revelation of this is Jesus is saying, look, look, I don't need your swords. I don't need your protection. This is something I'm doing by myself. I'm so powerful that I knew these people were coming. I knew you'd deny me, Peter. I'm going to forgive you anyway. When I speak, the whole world listens. I'm going to go to that cross anyway because this ain't about you, Peter. This ain't about these high priests. This ain't about the servant Malchus. This is about me saving the world and paying their sin debt and giving them a chance to escape hell forever. I don't need your help. Put your sword away. Don't you know I can just knock people? Didn't you see me multiply the bread? Didn't you see me multiply the fish? Didn't you see me walk on water? Come on, somebody. Who is he to you today? Who is Jesus to you today? Because I came today as a witness of the truth of who he has been in my life, what he has revealed in my life, what power he has revealed in my life, that he is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And he says, put up thy sword into thy sheath, the cup which my father have given me, shall I not drink it? And we all know what happened after that. It is finished. And then they went out in power of his spirit to go lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. And here we are today at 1123, 12 minutes later. And I'm asking you today as a witness of the truth, bearing witness of the power of the Holy Ghost within me and his love that molded me and changed me into a new creature in Christ Jesus to ask you today, what seek ye? Who is he to you? And are you proclaiming it to others? Minister Paul, have a wonderful weekend. Shalom.